anybody stupid enough to pay for coaching, I've got some magic beans to sell them. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, mate, you're going to sell a lot of magic beans. <laughs> <laughs> I started off as mainly a tournament vlogging channel. Um, and going over each of my games and what went well, what went poorly. And that was new. And then obviously the easy then thing is to go, well, let's try a battle report. Yeah, I think one of the things I really, really like is the is the fact that it's all about the the best way of playing and the best, and it's about sportsmanship. And I think that's something that often gets overlooked. I'll tell you what, I had had so many people tell me what I was doing was a waste of time. Before we get into the episode, we want to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Siege Studios. We offer a variety of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget. Whether you want a centerpiece character or an entire gaming army, we offer well above the industry standard of quality and experience. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at siegestudios.co.uk. And in the month of July, new clients can get 5% off any commission by using the code JULY5. Back to the show. Hello everyone and welcome to this very special episode of Paint Perspective. We have our first guest on the show, Mr. Stephen Box of Vanguard Tactics. How you doing mate? How you doing? Welcome, welcome. to the show. Thank you very much for having me. So it's nice to, to uh, have a pro gamer in our, in our aura <laughs> on the is, podcast. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, the I'd pro say, gamer. I'd say the pro gamer, yeah. The pro them. Warhammer player, yeah. sure. I would say. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to go over a couple of bits and bobs today uh, and I think the best place to start would probably be how we first met, which conveniently was over a game, which you absolutely smashed me on, just to just to put it out there. It was, it was close <laughs> up until a point, and then it was like an avalanche of absolute pain from what I remember. Um, and it was with my, I was using my ill-fated Iron Warrior Army. I think it was one of the, one, it was probably one of the last proper games I had with it, I think, yeah, if memory serves right. Is that the army you lost? I sold it. It got stolen as a porch theft. Yeah, we have story. we have We've done the story it. on the yeah. podcast. Yeah. So it was yeah. the army with the defilers, with the with the converted defilers, yeah. and the converted like uh, demon dark, prince lord or dark. demon prince lord, and then there was like a guy on a darker bay, and then you had those the, little gun things at the back that kind of move along even without the crew. Rapier, they... rapier batteries, yeah, the quad heavy bottle rapier batteries, the demonically possessed ones, yeah, no longer available, but yeah. And yours are no longer available. Mine are definitely they, they got crushed available. in America. Yeah, they got crushed in the back of a uh, dust cart. So, so yeah. this was at Warhammer Fest. It was, uh, well, no, it wasn't Warhammer. It was Warhammer World. If yeah, Warhammer says. World. Yeah, 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 a Warhammer yeah. World event. Yeah, a yeah. Warhammer World event. And it was like, it was a narrative campaign thing. It was, yeah. It was like you, you had three different. I can't believe I went to a narrative event. I was going to say <laughs> you, you weren't playing narratively, from what yeah. I remember. Yes, I was. <laughs> I had a backstory. Oh, okay, All right, yeah. you can use. That I was excuse. using my. <laughs> I was using my craft world elder. I remember. With, wasn't that with the dark reapers that popped up, shot, and then popped back down? I think it was. That sounds like a you problem. No, that yeah. sounds like a you play. A you play style. That's what it sounds. Have you not like. read the books. That's very narrative. <laughs> yeah, that's very narrative. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to let you shoot them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's just yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I had Jane Zar and had a sermon. Yeah, yeah. I think it ended on Azuman. It, it, like, we'll go for it, but I, I think if memory serves right, it was it's quite neck and neck to a point, and mm. then it ended with a with a with a duel because when <laughs> when you could still do duels, I think that's how long ago it was. Um, I think it was my lord against your against Jane Jar. I think it was I'm right. Sure it was at the very end, but yeah, that was that was quite that was quite fun, and we like we we met over that, and I I think at that point, I think I did know. I think I'm sure I'd seen at least one or two videos that you'd done at that point. So I kind of think I knew who you were, but we kind of. I don't know if I'd had any videos out at that point. I can't. I, I'm sure there was because you introduced yourself and you said about Vanguard. I'm sure you did. So I think our first ever meeting at that event. I mean, I hadn't gone to. I think I was still in the fitness business, I... and I knew of you through like siege sponsoring like tabletop tactics and stuff potentially yeah yeah and i i think after that i added you as a friend on facebook and that then we it. met like at warhammer fest about that, six months later and that was when that vanguard was uh, was up and running at that point i had like fest. two videos out yeah yeah because we had a conversation at fest as well didn't we were like i you know i think i think i saw you playing uh because you were playing the main tournament at fest if memory serves right and yeah um yeah we just started having a chat and, and I, I think i said to you like you know what you're doing no one else is doing it in the industry and like you know it's good that someone's providing like that tuition service and it's like it's because i'm always always about market gaps and things like that and i think to to basically have it so that um so that you, you you're doing something that nobody else is doing is, is, is it's a really good thing especially within our industry um but yeah but like at that first game 
I think we kind of got on quite well with that first game. I think there's a lot of mindset things that are very similar. Yeah. Um, but but then seeing what you've done since since that first time we met and obviously seeing Vanguard grow has, has just been you know, obviously great for the industry. Um, and also it's just been good to see you kind of take a very a similar sort of thing to what you've had in fitness and then meld that into into the into the into the sort of wargaming industry. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's been a I think such a sh- what a roller coaster really of a <laughs> of a few years. I think it was like I think VT's coming up to its like fourth birthday. Yeah. Um which it really makes me feel old now. Yeah, so it's if that's crazy. if that's four years, then surely yeah, that first meeting of you two definitely would have been before Vanguard. I, I think yeah, so, yeah. Well we were we playing I think the question is were we playing seventh edition or eighth edition? You could still do challenges. I remember that. So seventh edition then it must have been I've seventh. never even heard of that and i so i didn't really play seventh so that must have been seventh because i don't yeah. think that was in eight that that terminology was in yeah. Eight, yeah i don't think so. yeah so that because that, that i think because that was really because i think we even though it was a narrative event we, you we, i mean obviously look you, you you still play competitively which is perfectly fine i think that's a good thing um but it was a very close game up until a point and then you steamrolled me but um but yeah i was uh, gonna say yeah. i still think that's a good thing he says removing his models yeah. from the board slowly <laughs> i'm so happy about this i was having fun it was a good game it i'm was, so glad you was, played competitively it was, it was, really brilliant. no it was it was really good because we ended it on we ended it on the on, on like a, a challenge or like two characters just two characters fighting which is like narratively that's quite cool that's as narrative um, as you could get yeah, yeah that's really, it was, that's really cool. it was really fun uh still beat me in that challenge as well. <laughs> uh, so so yeah uh, but um but no it was good um and then yeah like i think just just like that kind of like segued re- segued really nicely into like uh, us chatting a lot more yeah um and then down the line obviously us as as companies and businesses then starting to work together i think that's just been a really sort of natural really nice natural progression of how things have been yeah because i think like one of the things that i remember you telling me was that at the time obviously i was still really prevalent in the fitness industry mm-hmm. i was putting out a lot of content for fitness um and i think you would like resonated quite well to the way that i had I think you were talking about some of the infographics I'd made, how yeah, yeah. simple they were. You know, I'm very much around science-backed, evidence-based practice when it comes to coaching for fitness. Um, and I think the simplicity of it, you sort of said to me, look, you explain it in a really easy way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, I think then when I told you that I was going to start doing the same for uh, Warhammer because of just this new passion of mine, um, yeah. Yeah, it, as I said, like market gap is always good to start to see a market gap. And at that time, I'd probably say around what four, four and a bit year, or three and a bit years ago, like the thought of like the thought of actually somebody teaching people and helping people to learn this game and play the game was something that was so foreign within our industry. But then, like, it, but then any other all other industries, there right, there is that in place. Like, and it but, still is now though. Like yeah, yeah. Some on you only have to look at some of my because um, we've had some ads go out for our you know our new courses, right? anybody stupid enough to pay for coach and i've got some magic beans to sell them <laughs> and i was thinking mate you're gonna sell a lot of magic beans <laughs> <laughs> that's not on shopify it should be mate because i tell you what i've got that's some a t-shirt isn't it like yeah God, surely but no but and there still is that like mindset i mean even somebody that um i've seen before um i even saw they work for games workshop they commented like this is why we sell the rule book we, why do you need a course to teach you how the rules play? And I'm like, well, just think about what you've just said there. A rule book. Well, that's only good if you want to read it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you don't want to read it, then get taught how to do it. And it's, again, I'm not forcing people to buy the course. No, of course not. No. Um, and it's an option for those people that want to learn in a different way mm-hmm. or learn from somebody that has experience. So... I'm, I've always been one for education of, you know, whether it's been business or whether it's been uh, extracurricular, like nutritional courses or Mm -hmm. training, you know, I've sought out to train with some of the best bodybuilders in the world because I've wanted to learn hands-on from how they train because I'm not, I think if you're never willing to invest in yourself, then it shows a sheer amount of arrogance that you already know or you think you know everything. Yeah, I agree. And it's it's weird because when you first get into anything, you're like, yeah, I know, I know everything there is to know, and then and then you actually learn some stuff and you go, I know nothing. Yeah, I am. Li- I literally yeah. know nothing about what I'm doing right now, and you end up with this. Um, and you see this a lot with researchers and scientists, and you know their their knowledge is so good in a topic, mm. but they end up realizing that they don't know as much as they think they did. 
It's and, uh, sorry. There's a name. I'm blanking on the name, but there's a name for the graph that shows that very thing where you just start something and you go up to the top and you think you're right up here. And then as you actually start to yep. learn everything, you go all the way there down is a name and for then it. slowly back up. With, we're up. on about the exact same I, thing. I can't yeah. remember what the, I'm blanking on the name. So someone can comment and correct me if, if, if you want that. Uh, and it goes the same for every single industry. Yeah. Well, I would say it's quite strange actually that like, especially within our industry, if you really dial down and magnify an hours, like, People will instinctively jump to YouTube or they'll jump on hobby blogs or they'll jump, you know, or they'll pay for online tuition or they'll pay for going to a physical class or something. But then it seems so strange and so weird that to then learn again, the answer is, oh no, just look in the rule book. Like why, why would somebody go down the route of going through all those different mediums of trying to improve their painting? It's just putting paint on the model. But then for learning the game, it's, it's, it seems foreign to have someone go, well, actually, this is the best way to do this. Well, if you yeah. do this, this is the better way of doing well, it. Or it's that, or you should just learn by playing. Just learn with your yeah. friends. Cool. How good are you at football? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did, exactly. Yeah. How did that work out for you playing in the park? You know, it seems like there's a lot of parallels between like the gaming and the yeah, painting, yeah. which to, just to loop back around to like the, the main thing of you two meeting is probably why the companies yeah. working together kind of work so well. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, I think so, a... how long uh, after like, um, you obviously, when you initially met Vanguard's not even a thing by the next time you meet Vanguard starts up again or starts up and by the time you meet again is a conversation there straight like that set were you playing a game again the second time no no met? so he was playing was just it's, at it's, fest I was at fest I just went I think I went for GD but like I was at fest and and um and you were playing in the tournament and then yeah. I, I saw you playing and went, we just I then had a chat at, at, at fest at that point um yeah yeah is so, the conversation big, there straight away about working together? I don't. Because I'm not in the I company. Don't, I don't know. You, you weren't here. in the business. No, no. I don't. I don't. I don't remember if we did or if we didn't. But I think, I think the inklings were there. I think the idea, the thought process. You, made. you had mentioned something to me. You were like, "I like what you're doing." Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, in this is perfectly honest. I think you were like, "You're just starting out. Keep going, uh, and we'll see where it goes." And I was not like offended or taken aback because that is the right decision to make is to go right there's something new that's happened let's watch it for a while because you don't know how that person's going to act or behave cool you've done a video and it went well brilliant what about the next 20 what about the next 30 what about all the other interactions and i think anytime you put your brand name associated with anybody else's you need to be incredibly careful with who you work with because yeah. if they are I mean, I had this in my fitness business where people started to become, is it defamatory or what's the word? Uh, I, I know what you mean, but yeah. Like slag other people off, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and if your brand doesn't want to resonate with that type of behavior, then it can look really bad because you're essentially saying, hey, we support this channel in the way that they do business, whether that's their morals, their standpoint, their view, whatever it might be. So you were a hundred percent in your right to go, cool, keep doing what you're doing. And for me, I'm like, that was great. That was a nice bit of motivation to go. Yeah. I've, do you know what, if something comes of it in the future, that's amazing. If it doesn't, it's just a nice little, it's like a positive message at the time to go, cool. I might be onto something here from somebody that I, you know, immensely respected in the industry. Um, and I thought, okay, cool. Because I tell you what, I had had so many people tell me what I was doing with a waste of time. Um, my parents, you know, not that they would have tried to discourage me because they want the best for me. Yeah. They'd have probably see, wanted me to get, you know, like a, a proper job or whatever. And, or they had seen me go through this and they had witnessed a terrible transition um, for me. They witnessed that and they probably didn't want me to go through any more pain again. Yeah, yeah. So it was more like pain avoidance than anything else. So even my friends were like, Steve, no one's going to pay for this. No one's going to, you know, watch that type of content. Nobody's interested in it. Because at the time, you literally just had a couple of battle report channels. Yeah. yeah there yeah. was like mini war gaming, tabletop. CT. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and a couple of other names. Or whatever. It, was a little bit, it was a little bit different because we only worked, obviously, with battle report channels at that point. But then, but then yours is a nice hybrid of like teaching and also doing the reports which inherently then teaches people how to play through those battle reports as well your way of doing it is very very different in my mind to the way that some other channels yeah. do it and i think that's a very good thing that makes you and your channel and vanguard a niche within a niche but that's before we talk about the classes and all the other stuff that you do um because i first started off as tournament vlogging 
that was the first yeah, thing. Yeah, was... you used to go with the other half, didn't you, to tournaments, if memory serves correct? Or she, you, did she used to go with you? I, oh, I, I'm sure I saw a video where you went to the States or you played, you played yeah, something. Been, yeah, she'd come, yeah, come out to one at, last, at the Las Vegas Open. That but, was it, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Like I started off as mainly a tournament vlogging channel um, and going over each of my games and what went well, what went poorly. And that was new. And then obviously the easy then thing is to go, well, let's try a battle report. A, because I'd seen other people do it and it looked like fun to try and create a battle report. So I never set out to be a battle report channel like, for example, TT and, uh, you know, because that they are incredible at that. That's what they do best. They have a really nice blend of like different units, flavors to get an essence of how that army should feel and play. Whereas I was looking at it from a slightly different angle of, and then all of a sudden I was met with a huge amount, I think, of negativity when you say to someone, I want to play at a tournament and people all of a sudden just disengage from you because that was, and I was like, how do I change that? So my channel, I think, swiftly changed then to, I, I, yeah. I think I turned around and I, I said to you, like, obviously, like, we have like a minimum, like, like I don't want to say entry point, but we have like a certain level that a channel needs to be to. I think it was yeah. a number of followers or something, or subscribers, sorry. So I think I, we had the conversation about that and I, and I said that to you. And that kind of gave you a bit of a goal, I think, yeah, for, you to, for you to, to aim to. And like, I'm not being funny. Like you, 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 you I, I remember where I was when you messaged me saying, we've hit that, let's have a conversation. I was in my kitchen and you messaged me and you were, and I got a message through and I was literally like, fair play. Like, you know, you've done it. Um, You're like, right, come on. Yeah. Right. You said, you said, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. let's yeah. come on now. Yeah. So, so are you a man of your word? Yeah. 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 And we did to me. No, and we did. Don't make me do a it, post about this. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, God, I've got to, got to do that now. Yeah. But no, um, back to me into a corner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Worked out well. Yeah. 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 And then, um, and then we, and then obviously we started, but we started painting models for you. And then um, I think we've done quite a numerous, numerous bits and bobs. I think the first major, major thing I think has always been the Tau army, which we've done yeah. for you, the far, the far side enclave. Yeah. Tower, which again was a phenomenal project um you know uh and uh and you've used that quite a bit and we've done some other projects for you some and then we've we've done a focus on some some more character models for you you've got quite a few characters some, yeah. some bobs um so we've done a nice variation of things for you i think for the channel as well got yeah. some in progress at the minute yeah well. yeah yeah won't, won't, won't say won't anything reveal too much about. just yet unless you want to unless it's like a big i think i've already said it oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay yeah good it's, cool I think it's yeah. Really public knowledge that's fine oh that's fine yeah, yeah. yeah. i didn't want to blow it out but <laughs> yeah that's fine yeah um but so you, what is it we're doing sisters at the moment for you yeah some new sisters the adept of sororitas oh yeah oh, sorry yeah. yeah of course um yeah, yeah. so that it was uh, actually going to be space rings with female heads Oh yeah, yeah but that I would thought, have been yeah, that would have been that would have gone down well. Yeah, yeah, I know that yeah. would have been popular. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd still love to do that actually. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, so we're working on that for you at the minute. And then, um, and then I think, uh, I think that there, there's lots of opportunities for us to do other bits and bobs in the future. I think there's a lot, of, lot of the one thing I really like as well, especially from a client perspective, is that that we can obviously help people to obviously paint their miniatures for them and get them to the point. And then it's a really nice, easy ability for us to say, well, look, if you are if you do want assistance with paint, uh, with the gaming side of stuff, it's a really nice, easy for us to say, well, look, we, we work with the, the best pro gamer in the industry. The, you know, the, 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 pro, the gamer. pro gamer in the industry. The pro Warhammer the gamer. The pro Warhammer gamer in the industry. Right. According yeah. to according to many YouTube videos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think one of the things that I really, really like is the is the fact that it's all about the the best way of playing and the best, and it's about sportsmanship. And I think that's something that often gets overlooked. So to have that as as like a, a as a partner to work with and be able to point customers with confidence, which is always something that I've always wanted to do with, with whatever you know we get asked by clients and customers of Siege, um, to be able to point people to you and with confidence, knowing that they're going to get looked after and that they're going to get the best service for that specific thing within our industry, I think is is a really good thing for us to be able to offer. Um, and likewise, obviously, the return well, of that. When we did that, um, when I looked at that army, that client of yours army for votan yes yeah yeah you know we went over yeah, so we're just yeah we're just getting into that yeah i think he's he's just emailed in fairly recently saying that he had a chat with you and yeah get going on that thing now because yeah. it was like looking at it thinking well you're but you're missing a bit of an opportunity here if you don't put this unit in or you know it might be worth just taking th uh, six rather than three and it might be worth magnetizing this win and stuff and it was strange because at the time um it was in that interim between ninth edition and 10th edition. Yeah, yeah. So obviously I had to be extremely careful with what I said, but right, I think yeah. it, make, it made that, I think, person then and your client have a little bit more reassurance 
about the decisions they were making and the benefits of magnetizing those options. Yeah, 100%. Because I said, look, you're not sure what the addition's going to look like right now. So just having some magnetized options on these units that are fairly expensive, and that is typically my motto, is magnetize your really expensive options. Yeah. And the what you know whether you're taking a missile launcher or you're taking a um i don't know what what's the las beamer thing i can't remember the votan las uh, oh yeah las. there's a high las not, not yeah. my area yeah so votan. but what gaming in general but votan definitely yeah. not you know it's the high las so whether you're taking you know you've got like a tactical let's call it a tactical squad right yeah and whether you're taking a plasma pistol on your sergeant or a pole pistol, pistol it's not going to make much difference in the grand scheme so do should you magnetize that option Probably it's not worth it, right? No, I know. But you know whether you're putting a, you know, on like for example the the Hecatron Fortress, and you're like, right, well, what do I want the conversion beamer? Yeah. Or what you know what other options there are? That's probably worth magnetizing. Well, right? it's a high investment kit, and you yeah. like you know it makes sense to get as max maximum functionality from it. For, exactly. And, and what you're doing, whatever happens with additions or whatever, is you're future proofing yourself for 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 yeah. being able to. And like, you don't know the type of opponent you're going to play against. You know, you might have fixed a certain weapon on there. And in the meta might shift. Yeah, it, yeah, correctly. Yeah, and that and that player might the other person you play against might not perhaps want you to use a weapon that's not on the model, for example, or you do have some tournaments like that it is WYSIWYG and you yep. have to, you know, so having that flexibility and functionality and it's where that advice for, for our clients really helps with having you on board in that, in that capacity for to be able to point, you know, and say, well, look, you know, being frank, the gaming side is not our speciality. Painting, we've got you covered, but, but well, the, the last thing you want to happen is somebody you have like an illegal army list. Yeah. Where they, because what I, you know, when I've received like the Tau army, I opened it up and straight away, I want to get it on the table. You want to have that play experience. Correct, yeah. Um, you, want to, you want it to play as it looks. And it looks incredible, so you want it to play incredibly. Um, so, you know, having the opportunity then to maybe even catch up as well and go, Steve, like, how, how should I deploy the army? And we can always do follow-ups and stuff like that, which is really cool. Because then how do we get this army being played on the tabletop more often than not? Because all I care about is having like lifelong participation in the game and helping other people do that. It's why I help people become, you know, I focus on being a great opponent rather than being a great player. And, you know, you've, if you're investing that amount of money into purchasing the models, getting it commissioned, then yeah, we want it on the table as frequently as possible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The worst but, thing is having something on the shelf and you don't, you don't, you don't, you've invest, invested obviously what you invest in to get it painted. And you then don't know how to use it. You don't know how to use it or you don't use it because it has options which well, it's not the worst thing if it looks pretty on the shelf we do plenty of models that just look pretty on the shelf that is that is very true i'm saying if you if you've i've got, got a few models that look pretty on the yeah. shelf like they don't they don't get gamed with very often it's if you've got that hybrid of you do game and you do and you do appreciate the paint work or if you you know if you're just someone obviously that wants on the shelf that's perfectly fine obviously you have whatever options you want um but but yeah if you've got that hot if you do you know if you're in both areas then that that really this... helps there's something about it though, like the you know, like the avatar you guys did for me. Yeah, yeah. That avatar, I would say, has had more pictures taken of it than any other model. At Be like tournaments. Yeah. yeah. Because when I go to a tournament, people stop and they want to look at it. I'm putting it on the best shelf it possibly could be on. Right? Yeah. And that's in its yeah, yeah, environment in which it was, in my opinion, intended to be on. Yeah. It's intended to be on the battlefield wrecking you that's what the <laughs> avatar should be doing right and if it's not wrecking you then we've got a problem <laughs> but... I, just, I just want to caveat nothing that we do with painting improves the model's performance on the table <laughs> yeah. just want to say that 100 percent does yeah. uh, <laughs> and that is a uh... <laughs> yeah but, but no yeah it's uh, i'm glad that's really that's really humbling to hear obviously like, i'll pass that on to the team member who painted it and like it is it is very much um it is very much something which uh it, you're right it is it's the best advertising canvas for for, for what we do yeah uh, you know he's having it in at tournaments and stuff like that um but... that was actually Actually, the two. I think did we do it at the same time? We did an avatar. And did we do Bella Core? You did. You? So you done Bella That was two of my, the two favorite things. I think that we uh, you did like, the I avatar and you did the Incarn. Oh, the Incarn as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I couldn't run both in the same army list, yeah. so there was a little bit of friction there. And um, I went with the avatar rather than the Incarn. Um, but like, if you look at LVO, the two thousand or this year's LVO, um, I played on stream. And majority of that stream, the close-up camera was just of the avatar. It's just him <laughs> like, yeah, I'm here. Still, well, that's on, good. still on this objective. That's good. But again, it's, I think if you've got a beautifully painted model, 
you do want to make sure it sees the action. You do want to get it stuck in. And I think you've got so much more um, investment into how that model performs on the table. Now, rightly so, that can often be a bad thing. If I was going to say, you'll be absolutely, absolutely gutted when it gets shots off the ball turn one. There is that thing, yeah, where it gets shot off immediately because like, oh, it's really well painted or just, uh, we'll but just that, get rid of that. But if you get your entire army painted, <laughs> yeah, yeah. then you're fine, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah you'll be happy the entire time. Painted, yeah. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll segue that then. Uh, so we've got our, our new segment, which is question of the week. So thank you everyone for submitting your questions. We've got one this weekend, which is, how can someone improve their airbrush skills? Your your that pandering one you've vastly vastly improved with one of recent, especially for those multiple methods of um of 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 frantic army painting. Yeah, um, I think, and this is gonna sound so stupid to say, but just put paint in the bloody thing. Honestly, like I think that when I first got the airbrush, I was so scared of using it, and I was like, oh um I oh how much do I put in and. So I was like, no, scrap that, stick some thinner in it, stick some paint in it, mix it about, have a go. If it yeah. doesn't look how it should, keep mixing those ratios until you get it about right. Mm. And the more you do it, the better you are going to get. Mm. And it is really that simple. You can end up with, um, you know, sometimes a bit too thick and it spits out paint. Sometimes it's too watery and it, you know, goes everywhere and you can see it streaking and stuff. But you will only get those. And I think that is the best thing is just getting that consistency of paint, right? Yeah, yeah. Because once you've got it down, the airbrush is the most incredible thing for army painting. It really is. I've never, um, I actually really enjoy the process. I find it really therapeutic to get my airbrush out and you know start painting armies. Um, but yeah, I really think you just have to be, it's not going to break. Yeah. And if it does break, you've probably just broken the needle, which you can probably just replace. That is the, the most fragile thing is the needle. And the easiest thing to clog is the nose tip. So if your paint gets a bit dry, that's probably where the problem is. Yeah, yeah. It feels like the, mo the most common issues are pretty fixable yeah, quite they are, easily. Yeah. So not to be too worried about it. Yeah, I think like um, just learning how it behaves for me was the, the it's, which again sounds really stupid, but it's like doing it, yeah, and like, I think, James can probably elaborate on this because I picked it up off of him, but practicing on like plastic hard or like yeah. an old tank side or something like that and actually getting to know. Terrain, terrain's a really good thing. Yeah, to yeah terrain on. is very good, yeah. Because you can't really go wrong. If it comes out real too thick, that's it's fine. Weathering. It will apply texture to the weathering. thing. Just weather it. Just weather it, yeah. yeah. Um, if it comes out too thin, cool, that's going to water it down, look like it's washed out. So yeah, applying, I mean, I just use um, typically a, a bit of paper. Yeah. And then I can sort of look on that piece of paper. Okay. Can I draw a line? Yeah. Cool. Can I do a, you know, if I press it down for too long, does it, does it start to run? And I use a piece of paper as my guide really before I then, uh, but I also use a, um, what I start to done, done a lot now is when I prime my model, I'll prime, I've got like a dry brush board. What I now do is, um, I use that, I prime it in the same color. So then I can see how the color of the airbrush is going to fall onto that and how it looks before I put it onto my model. So that's kind of like the next sort of stage, really. So I can see how my paint is going to interact with the texture on my dry brush palette thing board. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, just don't be so gentle with it. It's, it's a robust bit of kit. It is, yeah, yeah. Sling it about. Yeah. Sling it about. Yeah. <laughs> and leave it set up as well. Yeah. I think if you keep packing it away all the time, you're like, you're like oh, it feels like an effort to get out in a mm. chore. Leave it set up, stick the compressor in, you know, I think if you spend 20 minutes setting up your setup so you can just leave it done out, that's definitely the best thing to do. Because anytime you need to do something, think, right, think airbrush first. Could I do this with the airbrush? If you can, just do it. If you can prime the model with it, great. If you can put your base coat down, great, do it. If you want to varnish it, great, use the airbrush. And the more you just think, right, airbrush first, airbrush first, see what you can get away with with the airbrush before you realize, actually, maybe I can't do an eyeball. Um, but... <laughs> you know, see what you can do. Depends what scale you're painting. That is, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it depends how yeah. big the eyeballs are, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, like, they, I don't know if you, you probably teach, like, try and use the biggest brush possible yeah, yeah. and get good with the biggest brush possible because obviously it's just quicker. Yeah. Do that with the airbrush. It's on a whole new scale, right? Mm. So just think airbrush first, can I do it? And you'll realize... Actually, I probably should use the paintbrush at that stage. <laughs> but that's don't all. try and do your edge highlights with it. It's yeah. going to be a nightmare. No, but then at least that way you're like, okay, cool. We well, can learn from that. And then when you write down your process, mm. 
in your notebook of that's apparently good practice. Um, you know, you can write down. Yeah, what, he's picked up. He's, he's picked up learning. some tips he's from painted, painted sessions <laughs> with Jay. Someone's been listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you can then learn and write down your process, right? Maybe doing the, because there's also different ways with the airbrush in terms of what you should apply first, right? Because you've got to think the the airbrush is just going to allow light to fall onto the model. Yeah. And then with that light, it's going to put color on it. And I think you need to consider that when you're thinking about what colors you put down first whereas the brush you can get into gaps a little bit differently yeah correct um or vice versa so sometimes having the right order for it is really important i think that pretty much pretty much sums it up oh that was a good answer well thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of paint perspective and thank you to mr stephen box of vanguard tactics for coming on the show thanks for having me where can all the listeners find all of your wonderful content soon just head us uh, head over to youtube find out all about all of our content there and if you want to you can check out any of our courses on www.vanguardtactics.com and if you use the discount code siege10 then you'll get 10 percent off of all of the courses that we offer excellent thank you very much and thank you for listening see you next week